Hi, I'm Rhonda. That's Angie, and we are Adventures in Nomadness. Our Escape Travel Trailer 21 has awning lights and it has lights on the outside. So why would we need all these additional lights to light up the outside? In nearly two years full-time RVing in our escape, we've accumulated several lights. They are not just twinkly lights to decorate our campsite, but actually lights that have purpose. And I'm going to talk about why we have these lights, what we use them for, and maybe share a few of the things that we like about them, don't like about them, to help you make any decisions that you're going to potentially make. In addition, I'm going to show you what all of these lights look like at night and do a comparison of some lumens. So if you're trying to decide like how bright a light do you need, hopefully this will help you answer that question. So stick with me here as I go through my lights, starting with my absolutely favorite, can't leave home without it, headlamp. Now, I am not affiliated with headlamps whatsoever, but I will tell you, I do not go bike riding, camping, canoeing, kayaking, hiking, anything without a headlamp. And why? Because if for any reason I get stuck out in the dark, I want a light. And I do not, do not want to just rely on my cell phone. Yes, my cell phone always goes with me too, and it's a good backup. But do you really want to burn down your cell phone battery? She even using goes it to the for bathroom light? with that. <laughs> <laughs> I do at night. So absolutely love my headlamp. Now, the question is, what kind of headlamp do you want to get if you are going to get one? There are a lot of cheap ones out there, and I would say get as many lumens as possible. Um, we use this headlamp for everything from working hands-free, even inside the RV in the daytime. If you're in a cubby trying to work, a lot of times this is the best way to go. Um, these, this particular one will actually comes off and you can put it on your biking helmet, so it's usable that way. What I really like about this one um, is that it has multiple lights, so if you look up here close, uh, it actually has a red light, so if you want to do stargazing or you just don't want to blind people or there's a lot of moths, um, you can use a red light and still see a little bit in your area at night. And then it has three lights and a flashing light. And I'll show you all of these settings uh, when I do the nighttime portion of this video. Um, I didn't mention anything negative about this one, um, probably because I really don't have anything to say about it. Uh, it is rechargeable though, and that, if you'll look at all of these products here, they're either solar chargeable or um, rechargeable, and we don't want to have to use batteries. However, this can be run on batteries. Next up is our spotlight. We did without this for quite a while. Uh, this one is called High Noon Pro 1400L because it's 1400 lumens, and it actually has a lot of features. We'll start with uh, a lock. So if you don't want it to come on by accident, uh, you can lock it off. Uh, you can hold it basically like this and it has multiple settings, uh, lower and higher beam. And I love this. We'd use this all winter long. When you're trying to see if there's any animals out here, this pretty much does the job. Now they make one a little bit bigger than this that you could go up to. It has a broader beam. If I was still on a sailboat, I would go with the bigger um, guy. This one for us is perfect. I would say from an RV perspective, what do you need to spot stuff for? Well, you can be in a camp and still hear things and want to see it. But if you ever get stuck trying to park your rig at night, especially if it's raining, which we have done one time, you're gonna want a good spotlight. And something like this will be a lifesaver, even if you just use it once. The other great thing is it's water resistant and you can drop it from about here. Like if you're holding it and drop it, really a good all around rechargeable spotlight. And it also tells you on the back while it's charging and if it's going 
um, to run out of battery. So it tells you on the back. So again, I like this. I'm not necessarily trying to push this particular one. So get yourself a good spotlight or a really good flashlight. So what don't I like about this? Well, there's actually not a whole lot that I don't like about it. Um, it is, you can drop it in water and all of that. I mean, if it comes down to it, it's a spotlight. I have to hold it. It's, it's heavy-ish to the feel. Now, the bigger you go, the heavier it's gonna be. So next up is a lantern. So why do we need a lantern? Well, we ended up buying these while we were in the cabin, but really if I'm sitting in a tent, we needed something that's going to illuminate the space. And we thought, well, if we get these, we'll keep these for illumination. Also, if you're cooking outside, you wanna have some light. This has some really cool little legs that it st stands on. Uh, it has multiple levels. So there's actually two lights in here. You can light up both sides or just one side to save time. You can actually burn this on low setting for like 48 hours it'll last. Now I have sat in the cabin in the evening and I mean the, the sun was going down at what three o'clock at one point um, and, and this burned all night till 10 so like seven hours. So I have tested it that much on a half setting. So half light, halfway, and it was plenty of light. The great thing about this particular light is it has a flashing light if you wanna use it for emergency. If you forgot to charge it or it runs out, you can hand crank it. Um, and uh, go zero, um, you can charge this with a USB port. You can also, so it has the cord already attached. So you never have to look for it. If your cell phone dies, you can plug it in here and charge it up. And if you have a solar panel with a USB port, you can plug that in. Or if you have a Goal Zero, like foldable solar panel, this will plug into it. So really, if you need an emergency light, perfect for that, or just illuminating space, and you can dim it. So, you know, for romantic evenings or whatever. <laughs> so love this. What don't I like about it? The one thing, is that, now we've got a couple of these, is this switch right here, sometimes after you've used it for a while, it will get stiff. That's the only caution I have on this particular light, is that it can require some grip at times to do that. We have a rope light, which some people use just to decorate the space or light up their RV. Um, some people like to use these rope lights to try and keep vermin from getting into their RV. But we actually found, we actually watched a little mouse crawl down a rope light that was at our friend's RV. And we actually named this little rodent um, Shithead because he kept trying to get into everything. But he did not care about lights. We do, however, use this one um, inside the engine block and what we found is that pack rats like to get into your engine blocks. Organ Pipes Cactus Monument. Um, we had a pack rat. <laughs> Organ Pipe Cactus National <laughs> Monument. What she said. <laughs> um, we had one crawl all over our engine block and uh, you can take a look at that video if you want. Um, but essentially we started popping up our hood, putting a light in there on flash. And, and then we also use the scented uh, packet and I'll put that uh, what that was in the link below um, But we never have had any kind of tracks in our engine block since we started doing that Whether the lights have anything to do with it. I don't know, but we are continuing to do them again This is chargeable this particular guy comes with a stand and it has multiple modes on it and an off and on um, We took and tossed the stand. We don't need it um, but we just set these out each day let it charge up and uh, it's good overnight. So that brings us to the last set of lights. These are motion censored solar chargeable lights. Now, the only thing with the, these is that you gotta make sure that you turn them um, each day. So if you've got these set out, make sure that the light, the sun's gonna hit them. But these basically function the same way as these. They'll come on when it gets dark. Um, there's multiple settings on it where you can set it as it's just on or it, it'll come on and then shut off after a certain amount of time. What we like to do is set these around the RV 
If any rodents or other animals are coming up, they'll trigger this. The other thing is we found is that I usually set them so that if we're walking up to the RV, they pop on. So they actually help light up our campsite when we're coming back from visiting friends or something like that. So really liked these lights. The only downside for, of these particular ones is that when there's a lot of moths, once they trigger this light, it stays on and then more moths. So then it just <laughs> turns into this big bright light that just stays on. <laughs> no animals, just moths. I want to take a second and ask you to please leave your comments, questions, and ideas for lighting down below in our comments. All right, on to the next section. What you've been waiting for, the part of this video where I show you exactly how these lights look. And I'm going to put all of their specs that I could find for you down in the comments, as well as links to Amazon in case you're interested in looking at more information about any particular light. This has a red flashing light for emergencies, so if you want to carry it for that, and it, as I mentioned before, it ha it's a split light. So what I'm gonna show you are four different settings. That is half one light. That's one light at full. Two lights at half. And two lights at full. Well, you can see that it's lighting up this area and I can see halfway up the driveway. Next up is the motion activated solar light that we place around the RV. Um, one of the things that features that this has is a, what's considered about 270 degree light. It's supposed to, to light up about 200 square feet. Um, I haven't actually measured it but I'm not sure that it does as far as like being really bright, but it does do the job as far as how we use it. So the next light is our rope light that we use inside the truck on the engine block. And it is usually set for just basic flashing light that I'm showing you here. And it also has other types of flashing lights that you can see. So this is really basic. This is a warm light. Uh, white light and you can get it in multiple colors but that just happened to be what we found. We've got three levels of white. Low, medium, and high. The other feature that this headlamp has is a red light. You get there by turning that by holding down the button and then it also has a flashing light so if I just push it again and there's the flashing red. So the solid red, it'll give you a maybe 10 feet visibility. I am now going to compare this 450 lumens to the big spotlight we have. And unfortunately, the spotlight has gone dead. So I can't demonstrate this live, but what I am going to do is compare my headlamp to previous video using the spotlight from the porch of our cabin. This light is, is lighting up that area, but if you look at the spotlight, it was much brighter. So if we actually had a moose walking, you wouldn't be able to see as much definition as the spotlight provided. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.